Hey everyone, it's Matt Frazier, the Psychic Medium, and I am live right now on YouTube. Oh my god, I did not forget about you guys. It has been crazy over here in the Psychic Medium world. Of course, when you talk to the dead, you know, things get a little bit crazy. But it's been super crazy because of the fact that literally I have been booking event after event after event. All, all to come and to see you guys and to help you guys connect with your loved ones. So I'm not sure if you guys have heard the news, but I am coming to Texas, Arizona, Los Angeles, Las Vegas. Where else am I coming? I feel like I'm, I'm missing some places. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I am coming to uh, Washington. To, I think it's Topanish. Is that how you say it? Topanish? Uh, uh, Topanish, Washington. Excuse me. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Detroit, Michigan. New York City, can't forget New York City, all to help you guys reconnect with your loved ones. So if you haven't checked out my website, you've, had, you've got to head on over there because literally I have been posting event after event after event. And during these events, it's exactly like what you see me do on television. It's all about the readings and me helping you guys reconnect with your loved ones on the other side. But first of all, I want to come in and to talk to you live on YouTube right now to talk to you guys a little bit about what the souls have told me about what happens when we leave this earth, because so many of you have written it to me and you're like, Matt, was my mom scared? Was my dad scared? What happened? What happens when we transition to the other side? Well, the first thing that I want you to know is this, all right? Remember that there are two versions of us. There's this version, which is the physical version. And then deep within us, there's another version of ourself that's called our soul. And I like to think of this version as a digital version of us. It's the version that literally can't be destroyed. And the moment that we get sick, the moment that something happens to our body here in this world, the best part is, is that it doesn't affect our soul. Our soul is the perfect version of us, the version of us without illness, without pain, without suffering, and more importantly, without any of those, of those you know, negative things that we have to go through here in the physical world. Our soul only knows love, excuse me. And what happens is, I'm done sipping my coffee. Hold on, I got a little frog in my throat right now. Either that or it's a spirit. <laughs> but no, so seriously, so when we, when we leave this world, our soul is what transitions on to the other side. And the moment that we leave our body, the souls tell me this. The souls tell me that the moment that they leave their body here in this world, all of a sudden, it's like in an instant, the pain just leaves them. Somebody who had dealt with cancer, you know, for months and months and months that couldn't find, that, that couldn't find, you know, relief, that couldn't find comfort, all of a sudden, within an instant, the moment that they start their transition, the pain is gone. And then as they transition onto the other side, something amazing happens. All of a sudden, who start to appear, but their loved ones that have passed on before them. Right away, they see their mom that had passed 10 years ago, their dad that had passed 25 years ago. They see their pets that have passed on. And also they start to see familiar faces of people who they were connected to within life years and years ago. They may see, you know, the people that they went to high school with, the people that they went to elementary school with that, that you know, had passed before them that they had lost touch with, forgotten about, never knew about, but suddenly they're there and they're around them. Why? Because heaven is literally one big family, family reunion. And when our souls get there, when our souls transition on to the other side, what they tell me is, the souls tell me that we actually figure out and see how we're all connected with one another. It's like one big web. We see how we're connected to everyone else that's around us on the other side. And what's truly amazing is it's during this time that we transition over, over that we also go through what's called a life review. And we're able to see everything. Imagine being able to see everything in your life. Well, that's what happens in your life review. You're able to see what happens from the moment that you took your first breath here in this world to the moment that you took your last breath here in this world and everything in between. Imagine all the things that you forgot about. Imagine things from your childhood that you forgot about. Imagine memories that you forgot about, thoughts that you forgot about, family members that you forgot about. Imagine friends that you forgot about. Well, in an instant, when you go through your life review, everything returns. And also, you're able to see the way those people affected your life. You're able to see the way that the friends in your life affected you, your growth, your spiritual growth, you know, your path and your journey here in life. You're able to see, you know, your parents and, you know, how they helped you here in this world. 
or how they didn't help you here in this world. You'll also see the people who, who the people in your life who truly loved you and what they really felt about you. You're able to see what your journey was here in this world. You're able to see the certain gifts you were born with, the certain talents that you're born with, because we're all born here in this world with certain gifts, talents, and abilities. And you're also able to see the certain things that you were meant to do here in this world. How many of those goals you achieved and how many of those goals that you didn't achieve and how many of those goals did someone else get in the way? Or did something else happen? Well, this all happens during your life review. And during that life review, like I said, not only are we getting back in touch with family members, friends, but also your pets as well. Your pets are also there and they're, they're, they're among the first to greet you the moment that you make your transition over into the other side. And what the souls tell me is this, because I always ask the souls, were you afraid to die? You know, were you afraid to leave your body behind? And here's what they told me. They told me that here in this world, they were afraid. They were afraid because they didn't know what to expect. They didn't know what was going to happen. But the moment that they opened their eyes and the moment that they saw people that they loved and cared about in spirit, the moment they saw their mom that had passed, their dad that had passed, their sister that had passed years earlier, the moment that they saw that immediately, they didn't even know that they had died. Immediately, they were so excited to see that person again. They were so excited to see, you know, their mom, their wife, their husband, their child that had passed, whoever it is that had passed away that they didn't even realize what had actually happened. They didn't even realize that they had died. They were just so enamored with the fact that their family was there. And, you know, it kind of reminds me of the pandemic in a way, right? Because during this pandemic, it's taught us so much spiritually. How many of you have not been able to see your family members during the pandemic? How many of you couldn't see your mom, your dad, your loved ones? How many of you couldn't see your grandbabies? How many of you couldn't hug your loved ones? For me... I went the longest time without seeing my mom. I couldn't see my mom. I could talk to her on the phone. I could, you know, FaceTime her, but my mom was compromised. So I had to keep my distance from her. I couldn't actually see her. I couldn't spend holidays with her. You know, it was just Alexa and I all alone. But it's so amazing because the moment that, you know, uh, the moment that everything started to lift and, you know, we started to, to reconnect with our family members again, I remember seeing my mom, you know, and getting to be physically you know, uh, next to her and hug her for the very first time. And all of a sudden, you know, the moment that that hug took place, it was like the pandemic had never happened. It's like the moment that, you know, I was back with my loved ones and we were all in the same room with one another. It's almost like that past year and a half that we went through almost wasn't there and everything picked up right where it left off. At least that's how it felt for me. And your loved ones in spirit tell me that that same thing happens the moment they transition onto the other side. The moment they see the people that they loved and cared about, like their family members, friends, and pets, a moment, uh, you know, the moment that that happens, it's like time just picks up, you know, right where it left off. It's almost like when you go through, go to, you know, um, a high school reunion. Has that ever happened? And all of a sudden you get back in touch with friends that you haven't seen in 25 years, 30 years. But the minute that you see them and you recognize them, you start, you know, talking to one another. And next thing you know, you pick up like it, like, you know, there was never 25 years in between. And you want to know, you know, what they're doing in, the, in their life. You want to know how they've been. You want to know all these things about them. Well, that's what happens when you transition on. Souls on the other side, when they transition on, you know, one of the things that they tell me that they love being able to do is getting back in touch with their family members that have been on the other side, that they haven't been able to see for so many years. They get back in touch with them. They have conversations with them. And not only them, you'll also be, you also might be surprised to know that when your loved ones transition on, after they get reconnected with their family members on the other side, one of the first things that they want to do is check up on you. They really want to know that they can check up on you at any, at any given moment. They really want to know that you're okay. They really want to know that you're doing well. They really want to know that they have a connection to you, even though they're in a different world. So your loved ones will actually come back and check up on you here in this world. That's the reason why when a loved one first passes on, all of a sudden, Crazy things might start to happen in your life. All of a sudden, you know, you might start to go and notice that the lights start to start to flicker right after a loved one's passing. The doorbell may ring and no one's there. Your phone might get calls from your loved one's phone, you know, even though your loved one had passed on. And you're saying and you're saying to yourself, oh my God, it's my house haunted. Is my loved one at peace? What the hell is this? What is this going on? What's well, your loved one coming back and visiting you? But the one thing that is so crazy, all right, is that you know, when our loved ones leave this world. 
You know, as they're transitioning on, they're worrying that they're never going to be able to see you again. They're worrying about what if I don't get to see my loved ones? What if I don't get to see my family? Well, we worry about those same things. And that's why your loved ones use signs to reach you. That's the reason why your loved ones want to use signs to get your attention. It's the reason why, you know, they're appearing in your dreams. They're sending you repeating numbers. They're popping in and out of your life to let you know that where you go, their soul goes with you. And more importantly, that your loved ones can hear you anytime you think a message to them. Because even though they might be in heaven, we're linked to them energetically. We have a psychic connection to our loved ones. And that psychic connection is love. Love is an energy. It's a bond. It's a glue that keeps us connected to all those that we love on the other side, our friends, our pets, our family members. And when your loved ones transition on and when they go through their life review, they also choose to leave negativity behind, judgment behind, anger behind. Because think about it. If we all went to the other side, right? And when we went to the other side, if we said, oh, I'm mad, I'm mad at this person or, oh, my ex-husband's here. I got to stay on this side of heaven. Or, you know, oh, I can't stand this one, or I can't stand that one, or I can't stand the other one. Well, then it wouldn't be a place of peace. Your loved ones let go of all of that. That was part of their journey here in this world. It's not part of who they are now that they're on the other side. And that's the reason why your loved ones look back on you just with love. It's the reason why they want to help you from heaven. It's the reason why your loved ones in spirit, sorry, that was my alert going off because I have an online group reading tonight. But it's the reason why your loved ones come through. And, you know, they have all of these things that they want to share with you. And the reason why your loved ones many times during readings will tell you, don't hold on to the guilt. Don't hold on to the pain. Don't hold on to the hurt. Why? Because your loved ones in heaven are living life without it. Your loved ones in heaven are living life pain-free, without negativity, without hurt, without anger, without fear. And guess what? They tell me that we can live life our, our, that same way. We can live life just like that if we just let it go. Because the negative energy that this is what the souls tell me anyways, that they've learned when they went to the other side. And I always listen to them because they're very, they're very wise. You know, they tell me that when we hold a grudge against somebody, when we're mad at somebody, when somebody did something to us and we can't forgive them, we actually hold on to a piece of their energy. But when we let it go, we release that person from us. Do you know that? Do you know when you're mad at somebody, when you're angry at somebody, when you're pissed at somebody, when you're, you know, um, thinking about what they did to you, when they think, when you think about how unfairly they treated you, when you think about some of the acts that are unforgivable that they did to you, you actually are holding on to a piece of that energy. There's a little piece of them that's still within you. But when you let it go, it doesn't mean you go and you ring the doorbell and you apologize. When you let it go and say, you know what, I'm letting this go, you send that energy back to them. You should not have to hold on to anyone's negative energy. You shouldn't have to hold on to anyone else's, you know, pain, anxiety, you know, or, uh, or anger that they put into your life. It's not for you. Let it go. You don't have to hold on to it. That's what our loved ones on the other side have learned when they transition on. They see when they go through their life review, all of that pain, all of that hurt, all of those things that were put there by other people. And a lot of times your loved ones see why they became the person that they did. Maybe your loved one wasn't so nice when they left this world. Maybe it was because of the fact that they had addiction issues here in this world, like alcoholism, and they chose that over their family. Well, on the other side, you know, their soul chooses to let that go. Why? Because they want to be at a place of peace. They want to be able to watch over you. And they see when they go through their life review, how their actions here in life have affected different things. And I got to tell you, souls do come through that were not nice people here in this world who are now in heaven and they regret it. I've had so many readings like this, a father that comes through that apologizes to his daughter for walking out of, out of her life, you know, and, you know, for cheating on his wife here in this world, you know, a mother who suffered from, you know, alcoholism here in this world, who comes through to tell her daughter, I'm sorry for not being in your life. I'm sorry for choosing the alcohol over you, you know, um, a husband, a husband, you know, who leaves his wife, you know, right in the middle of them having children. Or, or excuse me, of her getting pregnant and leaves her on her own, you know, will come through and say, I wish that I was there. I, I saw the, the man that I should have been. And I'm sorry. Why? Because during that life review, we're able to see all the decisions that we've made in our lives and how sometimes we've hurt other people. So that's the reason why I'm telling you this for one reason, not to scare you, not to make you upset, but to tell you that sometimes we have souls that are watching over us 
that we wished weren't watching over all over us, right? Like for example, there's sometimes I'll do sometimes I'll do a reading and someone's ex-husband will come through, or someone's brother will come through that they were estranged from here in this world. Thank you, Jazzy, for the super chat. Sometimes someone's cousin, someone's best friends that you know they got in a fight with before their passing, someone's you know old boyfriend, someone's stepfather, someone's mother who they didn't who who uh, they had just agreement with here in this world will come through. And right away, that person will be really defensive. They'll be like, I don't want my mother watching over me. I don't want my stepfather watching over me. My stepfather was an alcoholic. You know, he treated me terrible. My uncle did this, this, and this to me. You know, my brother, we, me and him, we before he died, we got into this altercation. Bah, 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 bah. Well, guess what? Your loved ones in spirit come through because they want to let you know that, first of all, they're not holding on to that grudge anymore. And more importantly, they also come through sometimes to ask for your forgiveness. Because when souls pass on to the other side, when they first transition on to the other side, and there's things that are left unsaid with this unfinished business that they have to attend to, sometimes they'll actually come back and try to get your attention. Sometimes they'll appear in, in a dream, they'll send you a sign, or what they'll do is speak to a medium like myself to try to settle things with you here in this world. What I want to let you guys know is this is that your loved ones in spirit, when they transition on to the other side, have one main priority, and that's you. You know, a lot of times, they don't want you to hold on to that pain, to hold on to that, that anger, to hold on to that hurt if they caused it within your life. And that's the reason why they step forward to a psychic and medium like myself. So I want to let you guys know this because, you know, if you've ever heard, you know, of a soul being around you, maybe you felt someone around you, maybe you felt or you keep getting dreams of your stepfather who you couldn't stand here in this world. And you're like, why is he coming to me? Why am I having dreams of him? Well, it's because of the fact that, you know, maybe there's something there that he wants to tell you. Thank you, Martyr, as well for the super chat. You guys are too good to me. And they want to let you know on the other side that not only, not only are they okay, but they're looking after you with love. Because remember, that's why your loved ones are in heaven. The souls that are in heaven have let go of, you know, that negative side of them. And they're watching over you with love, with appreciation, and with understanding. And a lot of times your loved ones in spirit feel that they're more connected to you now than they were even within life. And that's what's so amazing. And that's the reason why your loved ones will actually come through and send signs to you. Signs are like little postcards from heaven that your loved ones send you that let you know, hey, I'm here. I'm in heaven. I'm okay. I'm with you. I am safe and at peace. And you can reach out to me at any time. And remember, if you want to reach out with a message to your loved one, remember that that same psychic connection I talked about is a connection that you have with your loved ones through your thoughts. Have you ever had a loved one just randomly come to you in your mind? Have you ever had a loved one just pop into your head? Maybe you felt like you could hear them talking to you. Maybe you saw things that reminded you of a loved one. Maybe you've got random memories of them. Those aren't random. Those are ways that your loved ones are trying to talk to you, reach you, and communicate with you. So here's what you can do. When you want to talk to a loved one, just think a message in your head. And literally, the moment that you think of a loved one in your head, it's like sending a text message to heaven. Immediately, your loved ones in heaven will get the alert that you're thinking about them. And the moment you do, you actually draw their spirit closer to you. And all your loved ones want, want you to know is one thing, that you can get in touch with them on your own. And more importantly, that they are helping you live life. Because when your loved ones go to the other side and they check in on you, they also see some of the problems that you're going through, some of the challenges that you're going through, some of the struggles that, they're, that you're going through. And what your loved ones do is they actually can check in on your life to see how you'll get past them. Remember, your loved ones can see the future. Mediums and psychics do not see the future. Your loved ones in spirit do. And that's how we get our information. When, when a psychic tells you you're going to get married or a medium tells you you're going to get married and who you're going to meet and, and how many children that you're going to have, where do you think those psychics and mediums get their information? We don't know who you're going to marry. We get that information from your loved ones in spirit. Your loved ones in spirit come through and they will actually tell us what's going to happen in your life. Why? Because your loved ones can see it. And more importantly, that's the reason why your loved ones are not nervous about you. They, not, they don't get worried. They don't get anxious. They don't get stressed in heaven. Because when you're going through a challenge, whether it be a financial challenge, whether it be a health challenge, whether it be, you know, um, an emotional challenge, your loved ones see the light at the end of the tunnel. They see how you're going to be able to go and move past that. And thank you, Poker Junkie, for the uh, super chat as well. And I want to let you guys know this. 
you know, that's the reason for science. That's the reason why your loved ones guide you. Do you ever feel like your loved ones are there and guiding you? It's because when you're going through that challenge, when you're going through that struggle, when you're saying, I can't get through this, oh my God, I need some divine assistance. That's when your loved ones come through and they try to help you. They'll send people into your life to help you on your path. You know, they'll go and send you signs to show you the things in your life on what you can achieve and where you can go and, you know, some of the things that you're meant to do here in this world. And sometimes they will even show you certain mentors and teachers within life. Have you ever saw somebody that just inspired you? Somebody that you said, oh my God, I want to do something like they do. I want to, I want to, you know, be in the type of job that they have, the type of work that they do. I want to have a relationship like that. You know, sometimes those people come into our lives as teachers to show us what it is in life that, you know, we're meant to do or what our, what our life pathway is supposed to be. And thank you, Dee Wilson, for the super chat as well. You know, because when your loved ones go to the other side, their main priority is you. They live their journey here in this world. They've learned their life lessons. And now they want to help you in any way that they can for you to live life to the fullest. So I just wanted to tell you about that and let you know that your loved ones can come through at any given moment at any given time. All you have to do is just be open and the signs will appear. And I know many of you guys are asking me, Matt, you know, how do I get a reading with you? I see all these questions. I want a reading. I want a reading. Okay. So there are only two ways to get a reading with me to come and see me in person or to come and see me online. All right. I just announced that I am coming to New York city, April 30th. Then I'm going to be coming to, um, then I'm going to be coming to Arizona, to Mesa, Arizona. I'm going to be coming to uh, Flagstaff, Arizona. Then I'm going to be coming to, uh, what, what's it called? Um, oh my God, I can't think of it. Las Vegas, Las Vegas, July 15th and 16th, I'll be there. Then I'm coming to Houston, Texas, Fort Worth, Texas, and Dallas, Texas. That's all happening in June. So I'm a little bit out of order. I got to remember all the places that I'm coming. I'm coming to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm coming to, um, where else am I coming? Detroit, Michigan. And I'm also coming to Toppenish, Washington as well. So for all of you guys who have seen me give readings on television, so for all of you who have been saying, Matt, I want to come, you know, to a reading with you, you've got to get your tickets. Like I said, I'm going to tell you again, I'm coming to Houston, Texas, Dallas, Texas, Fort Worth. I'm coming to, uh, oh, Los Angeles, Los Angeles, California, I'm coming to. I'm coming to New York City. I'm coming to, to Las Vegas. I'm coming to Mesa, Arizona, Flagstaff, Arizona, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm coming to Columbus, Ohio. I'm coming to Detroit, Michigan. I'm coming to Springfield, Massachusetts. It's all up on my website, meetmattfraser.com. That's meetmattfraser.com. And also, if I'm not coming to your city or state, you can join me for an online group reading. You'll be with other families, but that's where you're seeing all of these YouTube videos. All the videos of the readings that I've been giving on my YouTube page happen during my online group reading events. What happens is you're on screen with me on Zoom. There are other people that are there. And literally during that event... You know, I'm pulled to certain people. I might talk to you about your dad that had passed. And then next thing you know, talk to somebody else on screen about their mother that had died. And then next thing you know, be pulled to somebody else on screen about their, you know, husband or their wife that had passed. So that being said, if you'd like to come and join me, I want to let you guys know that that literally tickets sell out really fast. I just posted my tour on my website. So come and join me for a reading. All right. My website is meetmattfraser.com meetmattfraser.com because if the dead can find me, you can find me as well. And that's the number one way to come and join me for a reading or to join me online. So that being said, I really hope that you guys will come and join me. I cannot wait to see all of you. And literally, if you see tickets, get them because once these events sell out, we cannot allow anybody else in, even with the online group readings as well. And I tried to make, I tried to go and make, you know, all the tickets as affordable as possible because I think that Everybody should have the opportunity to hear from a loved one in spirit. So online readings are only $19 to attend. Most of the events are only $35, $40 to attend. Oh, that's the doorbell. I wonder who the hell's here. So that being said, that being said, it's probably blame my parents because see, I'm haunted by the living, not the dead. The dead don't bother me, the living do. So I'm going to go into the door, but I will see you all in person. Meet MattFraser.com. Come and join me. And more importantly, I cannot wait to meet you and help you connect with your loved ones in spirit. Until next time. I'll see you soon.